And it says that Belshazzar doesn't encourage them to offer praises to Daniel's God. But it says that they praise the gods of gold and silver, of bronze, iron, wood, and stone. Belshazzar was just thumbing his nose at God at that point. It seems that in our country, there are battles that, that go on within our, our judicial system. You know, this Christmas, it seemed that there were a number of, of court cases in which people didn't want a, a nativity scene on, a, on public property while anti-Christian displays were, were supported as, as a matter of free speech. <clears throat> it seems that many try, would, would try to silence a Christian voice in, in the public arena while Christian bashing and, and uh, defamation is, is perfectly all right. Now, I don't know that the Christian's response should be to simply roll over and, and play dead. But this story in, in Daniel 5 is a reminder to us that God can handle it. God can make a way to care for a situation when there seems to be no way. When it seems that someone else has the upper hand, God has a way of getting his message out and accomplishing his purposes. King Belshazzar and and his guests were having a grand old time when in verse 5, It says, suddenly the fingers of a human hand appeared and wrote on the plaster of the wall near the lampstand in the royal palace. The king watched the hand as it wrote. His face turned pale and he was so frightened that his knees knocked together and his legs gave way. I believe that the the king was feeling pretty confident. I believe that he thought he was was calling all the shots. He was in control. He could do whatever he wanted. Because when it came right down to it, he had possession of this gold and silver. He had power over over the Jews and, and their God. Belshazzar felt very much in control until he saw this finger writing on the wall. All of a sudden, what he thought he was so much in control of, all of a sudden he realized that he's not in control. He's not sure what to do. (coughs) He turns to his his advisors and says, what does this say? What does this mean? No one could answer him. There was quite a commotion and evidently the queen wasn't in the room and it says that she came back in and and reminded Belshazzar of this man named Daniel who had interpreted dreams for King Nebuchadnezzar. He said, why don't you call on Daniel? Why don't you invite Daniel to come and and interpret this for you? Well, the story goes on and, and Daniel was brought before the king. The king told him that what he would do for him, he would give him a purple robe, a gold necklace, and he, he would make him third in command in, in his kingdom if he would tell him what this, this writing said and what it meant. Verse 17, Then Daniel answered the king, You may keep your gifts for yourself and give your reward to someone else. Nevertheless, I will read the writing for the king and tell him what it means. <clears throat> I see a very humble Daniel at this point. Daniel wasn't interested in getting honor or position or or payment for this interpretation. Daniel was willing to be used by God in order to to communicate God's message to the king. Daniel ended up being rewarded, but, but the reward was not what motivated Daniel. Daniel was motivated because he wanted to be used by God. Listen to what Daniel says to the king in verse 18. O king, the the most high God gave your father Nebuchadnezzar sovereignty and greatness and glory and splendor. Because of his high position, he gave to him all the peoples and nations and men of every language. They dreaded and, and feared him. Those the king wanted to put to death, he put to death. Those he wanted to spare, he spared. Those he wanted to promote, he promoted, and those he wanted to humble, he humbled. 
But when his heart became arrogant and hardened with pride, he was deposed from his royal throne and stripped of his glory. He was driven away from people and given the mind of an animal. He, he lived with the wild donkeys and ate grass like cattle. And his body was drenched with the dew of heaven until he acknowledged that the Most High God is sovereign over the kingdoms of men and set over them anyone he wishes. But you, his son, O Belshazzar, have not humbled yourself, though you knew all of this. Instead, you have set yourself up against the Lord of heaven. You had the goblets from his temple brought to you, and you and your nobles, your wives, and your concubines drank wine from them. You praised the God of silver and gold, bronze, iron, wood, and stone, which cannot see or hear or understand. But you did not honor the God who holds his hand, holds, but you did not honor the God who holds in his hand your life and your ways. But you did not honor the God who holds in his hand your life and all your ways. <coughs> Therefore he sent the, the hand that wrote the inscription. This is what the inscription has written. Meany, meany, tickled Parsons. This is what the words mean. Meany, God has numbered the days of your reign and brought it to an end. Tekel, you have been weighed on the scales and found wanted, wanting. Parsons, your kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and the Persians. Then at Belshazzar's command, Daniel was clothed in purple, a gold chain was placed around his neck, and he was proclaimed the, the third highest ruler in the kingdom. That very night, Belshazzar, king of the Babylonians, was slain, and Darius the Mede took over the kingdom at the age of 62. Belshazzar knew better, but he ignored what he knew. He ignored what had happened during the reign of, of Nebuchadnezzar, and, and Belshazzar thought he could, could do it on his own. Do you take what you know about God seriously, or do you try and manipulate it for, for your advantage? The more we seek to be in control, the less we live by faith. The more we try to be in control, the less it requires for us to, to live by faith. And I believe that that was the problem with, with Belshazzar, is he wanted to be in control. He thought he was in control, and thus it required no dependence upon God. It, it required no faith. Being in control is a place that brings us comfort. And God doesn't necessarily call us to live in a place of comfort, but he calls us to live in a place in which we trust him. That means taking a step of faith, one step at a time. Taking a, a step of faith, one step at a time, even when we don't know what the second and third step may be. God wants us to walk by faith, and trust him with every step of the journey. King Belshazzar found his confidence in his own power, in his, his own control. He, he found his comfort in, in himself. And when that confidence was shaken, he had no place to turn. Maybe God is riding on your wall this morning. Well, maybe not in a, a literal sense, but, but maybe God is writing on, on your wall saying, there's some changes that, that you need to make. There's some things that, that you need to do in, in making an investment in your, your personal spiritual growth. Maybe you, you need to make some changes in, in the things that you fill your day with or, or the things that you leave out of your day. Maybe your faith needs to become less self-centered and and more centered on others, more, more centered on serving. Maybe God is writing on your wall saying you need to take your relationship with him more seriously and make a regular investment in it.